bring in the students, the staff, the faculty, and even our outside visitors back to campus will hopefully reinvigorate this campus and give us a, a, a sense of normal. And there's been a dedicated group of individuals who have never left and have been here since day one, working to make sure that when you come back, this place is safe, and I look forward to having everybody back. Coming back to campus, the first thing you're going to notice is less people on campus. And the de-densification of campus helps us in this tight urban environment where we are. As you walk across campus, you will see what we classify as public health signage that addresses the primary good public health practices of wearing your mask, washing your hands, staying home if you're not feeling well, and practicing good social distances. Signage that tells you this is how to enter this building, and signage that identifies how to egress a building. And whenever feasible and possible, we plan to have separate entries into buildings and separate egress paths into buildings. This is all intended to reduce the number of individuals walking through the same path at any individual period. You would also notice a lot of hand sanitizers across campus in many different areas. You shouldn't have to walk too far before you have access to a hand sanitizer. Um, as you go into the toilet rooms, you would also notice a lot of touchless um, faucets. Um, in the primary high traffic toilet rooms, we've changed out all the faucets to make them touchless. We've also improved the indoor air quality in buildings. You're not going to notice that, but I can assure you it has occurred. Um, and what does that mean? Um, Operations and Maintenance has worked to address two primary issues when it comes to indoor air quality. One is filtration, two is ventilation. So from a filtration perspective, improving the filters that are in our air handlers. Um, and from a ventilation perspective, introducing additional outside air into the buildings. And this has the added effect of making our interiors of our buildings um, a lot more safer and improving the indoor air quality. To start the process, what we wanted to first understand is what we had on hand as it relates to classroom spaces. So for example, we have over 330 classrooms um, on main campus that had about 13 to 15,000 seats. We evaluated this for COVID capacity. And when we say COVID capacity, what I'm referring to is when you take people who are sitting two feet apart and move them six foot apart. Um, that is now the new COVID capacity. And when we did this analysis, we determined a few things. Um, the occupants, occupancy in each classroom depends on the type of seating you have. So a tablet armchair classroom can get more students than a fixed lecture hall is what we determined. Once we had all the drawings for every classroom done across all of our campuses, we worked with housekeeping to hire outside vendors, working with temple movers, to organize these classrooms and remove excess furniture. So when you go in a classroom that has been set up for its current COVID capacity, you will only see available seats that meet the requirements of six foot social distance today. We have existing classroom spaces that could not, with the new COVID capacity, could not hold a lot of students. So many of those are being transformed into Zoom rooms. Walkman is one of the classes in Walkman are being transformed into Zoom rooms. In addition to that, we studied across all of our campus, any large format space that could have a classroom, we studied it to see if we could put a classroom in, in it. So the non-classroom spaces that we have transformed into classroom space is the Paley Hall, the Great Court in Mitten, um, we have spaces in Charles Library, um, spaces in the Student Center, a space in Alta Hall Commons that we have transformed into classrooms. So it's been an iterative process with a lot of teams across Temple's campus working together to bring these classrooms to life.
we're going to have a robust dine and offering on campus, you know, in Morgan Hall, Johnson and Hardwick, um, Panda Express is going to be open, obviously Starbucks will be available for those who want coffee, um, Stella's Cafe, um, Cozy in Pearson McGonagall. You will notice when you're on campus, there's, there's a lot more additional exterior seating if you want to grab your food from one of these dining areas and take it outside. And you will also see that the existing exterior seating has been reallocated and dispersed so that we maintain six foot distance between those existing seats. Elevators will be available for use. There will be occupant load posted on each elevator. It will be between two and four, depending on the size of the elevator and depending on the building. But you will have a clear identifier in each elevator indicating the occupant load. We encourage those who can to use the stairs as opposed to the elevator. As you use the stairs, you will see signage directing you on which path of the stair to stay. Primarily stay to the right as you're walking up the stair. That's a good rule of thumb to keep in mind. If you're walking through a stair, just stay to the right. If you're coming down, stay to the right. In buildings where um, classrooms are on the upper floors um, pre-COVID, um, pre prior to the pandemic, we have moved those classrooms to the lower levels where you can access them using either stairs easily and not have to get on an elevator to go up 10 floors. Specifically, Anderson Gladfelter um, is, is one of those um, buildings where there are no classrooms on the upper floors. All of the classrooms in, in that building will be on the lower level. There has been an enhanced cleaning protocol developed um, across campus. And what that involves is continuous cleaning through the day of high touch areas, enhanced use of uh, mechanical foggers, electrostatic disinfectants, um, and what you will see, um, and you might not see this, but you should know it is occurring, is that high touch points such as doorknobs, elevator buttons, there are people, when you're not in those, using those items that are coming behind you and constantly cleaning those areas, we are referred to those as the high touch areas. Coming back to campus for me uh, and being on campus over these months has been really helpful and gratifying. And it, it has made me think about what really is the Temple community. It's not the buildings, it's not the pavers, it's not the trees, it's really the individuals. All the work that has been done today will, will, will not be successful unless we all participate. There's a level of personal responsibility that everyone is, who's part of the Temple community has to take. We ask that you wear your mask. We're asking that you wash your hands. We will hope that and ask that people maintain six foot social distance. And we want you to stay home if you're feeling sick. This will help not only you, but it will help the entire Temple community. And that's the only way we're going to be able to be successful. I just want you to know that we're in this together so we can be together.